back with the Sunday Scrum. With me today, Rosemary Barton and Susan Riley. Let's pick up with the new Minister of National Defense, who's been facing some uncomfortable questions. Here's how Jason Kenney responded to a question by the CBC News Network's Julie Van Dusen about civilian casualties in coalition strikes against ISIS. We're not aware of any reports of uh, civilian casualties or so-called collateral damage as a result of any of the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, uh, strikes, and I'm not, I'm not aware of any. But CBC has confirmed that the U.S. is still investigating the deaths of three civilians in airstrikes. Then last week, Kenny said Canada and the U.S. were the only countries with so-called smart bombs. Kenny had to admit after that he was wrong. And Kenny tweeted a photo and caption suggesting that ISIS was enslaving women. But it turns out that photo was a reenactment for part of a religious ceremony. All right. So, Susan, what's going on here? Is Kenny out of his depth? Well, he's really being uncharacteristically... Um Error prone, I guess. He's been pretty, um, you know, pretty much admired around the hill, whether you agree with him or not, for, you know, keeping controlling the message and being very uh, available, more available than most to the media, and, you know, making a persuasive case for the government. Not so much as you've just pointed out um, this case. What interested me most about this was Justin Trudeau taking him on. They had a, an exchange in the Commons at a certain point in which. Um, you know, Kenny upbraided Trudeau for his mistakes, and Trudeau admitted, yes, I've made many. I am starting to sound like a liberal, aren't I? I'm not, I swear. I'm nonpartisan. But nonetheless, I thought for the first time in a long time, uh, Justin Trudeau uh, sounded authentic instead of artificial. He, he sort of stood up for himself, and he threw it right back at Kenny and uh, made, some, made some good points. I'm sure Kenny is a very smart guy with, with ambition to burn. Um, he will correct himself. Uh, I, I thought it was unseemly that he blamed some of his errors on staff briefings that he'd received. My mm -hmm. guess is he wasn't listening closely enough. But anyway. Um, Rosie, you, you, you know, it, 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 is, it, is it a problem of our system in a way that sometimes you're, you're minister of this one day, you're minister of that the next day? I mean, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Or, or, is, or is there something going on here? I mean, maybe a little bit. Um, I think that this is a different kind of portfolio for Jason Kenney. We've talked a lot about it in the office. If you look at the other things that he did, you know, Minister of Employment, Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, is that one of them? Yeah. Um, you know, these were sort of domestic political issues, right? Things that he had to d deal with within um, within the Canada, in, in a sense. Minister of National Defense, he's really been put on a whole, a whole new level, right? He's talking about things that are happening around the world. Um, really serious things as Canada is at war, um, and, and there's a lot more at stake, I think, in, in this portfolio than there ever has been for him before. It's also very complicated. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, to give him some credit, it is very complicated. Some people are naturally sort of um, more interested in this file. He, he does love it, and he is working hard. Should he be making these mistakes? No. He, you know, he should not be saying, for instance, in a scrum with a reporter definitively that there have been no civilian casualties. That is something that he yeah. either should avoid answering if he mm -hmm. doesn't know the answer or, or should not be making as a mistake mm -hmm. at this level. He just should not be. Yeah. Um, and that, that's obviously a problem for him and it's obviously a problem for the government. All right. Will he get oh. better? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Now, to what was probably the most played clip of the week but we still can't get enough. There are a couple of times that my assistant put in for a breakfast when I was on a plane, and they say I should have not claimed because I should have eaten that breakfast. Well, those breakfasts are pretty awful. If you want ice-cold camembert with broken crackers, have it. All right, Susan, what do you <laughs> well, think of that? I'm going to defend Nancy Ruth. I'm really? sorry, but I I like her. I think she's a character. Uh, she's you very hate well. Ice cold camembert. Is that why you're going to defend her? <laughs> I hate ice cold camembert, and I'm totally with her on that. And those crackers, send them back. No, um, I, that was a really dumb thing to say, and it was politically stupid, and it makes her sound like a you know kind of a, a snob and a, and a sort of entitled snob. And I don't think that's a fair characterization. She works really hard at her job. She uh, she's, she's a philanthropist. She comes from a wealthy family. She Gives, she's given away tons of money to various worthy causes, and she works hard as a senator. If anything, she seems starry-eyed to be in the Senate rather than um, cynical and entitled. That being said, here's the real scandal. The real scandal is on April the 1st, with nobody noticing, 
um, the Senate and the MPs gave themselves 2.57 percent raises. So the senators are now earning you know, $142,000 each. That's like $40 million for the whole bunch of them, 105 of them. MP salaries, base salary, have, has gone up to 167. Meanwhile, they're offering their own public servants 1 to 1.5 percent raises. So they, this, this kind of entitlement is more subtle. This is way more costly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, nobody gets to ask, have you really earned a raise this year? I mean, do you deserve to be making that much more money than the average person, than the average emergency room nurse, for example, say, who's arguably doing way more important work? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Rosie? Yeah, I mean, you, you cannot say things like that in this, in this culture, and you certainly cannot say things like that as a senator right now. And a lot of the other senators were flabbergasted when she said that. Uh, you know, I got emails from some of them, and, and a lot of them are having a hard time dealing with the Auditor General's audit, because they do find the questions very um, uh, invasive, they, 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 they don't know how they're supposed to remember what they ate three years ago, that kind of stuff. But to say something like that, th those are the kinds of things that ruin you. I mean, right? The $16 glass of orange juice from Bevoda, the the piece of gum. I mean, those are all, those are yeah. the kinds of things mm -hmm. that people grasp onto because regular people generally aren't complaining when they get free meals. We're just not. So you, you can't you can't really say things like that and you can't really say things like that, you know, just days before the Mike Duffy trial starts. It's wow. it's not good. And I I happen to know that Nancy Ruth mm -hmm. takes the bus to work. I've seen her on the bus really? with me. So, <laughs> you know, I, I I mean, I'm not sure that she she has any issues around that, but you just you just can't say that anymore. All right, so true. let's move on to the Mike Duffy trial, yeah. because uh, if we think that was a good clip, imagine the kind of clips that are going <laughs> to come out over this 41 days or whatever. Rosie, uh, set us set that trial up for us. It's, you know, it starts Tuesday. It's going to be a bit of a madhouse at the beginning uh, as we, as, as there will be huge media attention. The opening statements will be critical for trying to frame if this is a senator who was double dipping, committing fraud, stealing from the taxpayers, and then ultimately having it paid back by the prime minister's former chief of staff, or is this a senator, as Mike Duffy's lawyers will say, who had the rules approved, uh, who was playing along with a script written by the, by the prime minister script and who has been, uh, you know, uh, horribly uh, d done wrong in, in the court of public opinion. What it will do is, is a couple of things. It will certainly expose something in terms of what Mike Duffy was doing, allegedly, right? But the other thing it will expose is the amount of political containment that was happening within the prime minister's office, not only around Mike Duffy, but around other potential senators as well. We've seen glimpses of it already from the RCMP uh, court documents, and that is the part that politically will be damaging. You know, for, for people, including the former chief of staff, Nigel Wright, to have been spending, you know, days and days trying to cover this up, contain it, manage it, may be understandable politically and may not have been illegal in any way, certainly. But will Canadians like seeing that? I'm not so sure. Susan, final word to you. Do you think it's going to be bigger than House of Cards? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not sure how long the yeah. public I don't think anyone was murdered. <laughs> no, that's true. Well, um, I'm not sure how, how long uh, public interest will be sustained. Um, Mr. Duffy has been threatening, you know, these kind of explosive revelations for a long time. Um, I'm not sure he has much more to say, uh, but we'll see. Um, I think that uh, the main damage will be to him. A second damage to the Senate, and if Mr. Harper's lucky, people will move on and, and uh, to other issues.